the whole show was great. Yes, the, I got to watch more. Yeah, yeah, the the Rocky Romero match you should watch. And I mean, the, well, the the Cavernario match was great, and the um, but I mean, the whole show was so heated. I mean, it was just like uh, so much fun to watch. The crowd just was going just completely nuts for almost everything. So I mean, I just um, yeah, it was it was definitely I I was expecting to really love the show, and I liked it even more. So yeah. Well, before we talk about the main event, we should talk about uh, how this whole Brian Danielson Blue Panther match even came about. What is what is the story here? Okay, so so, so um, basically the the story was that um, there's there's a reporter named Apollo Valdez who writes for um, Super Luchas magazine. So um, you know, before WrestleMania 30, so it's ten years ago. Um, he was uh, going to go to um, the WrestleMania, you know, in um, and uh, he was at um, a show and he recorded a video with Blue Panther where Blue Panther thanked Brian Danielson because Brian Danielson had always said like he wanted to have a dream match with Blue Panther. Blue Panther is one of his all time favorite wrestlers. So Blue Panther had found out about it and he just said like he made a video for, for Brian Danielson. And he gave Brian Danielson an autographed Blue Panther mask. And um, Brian Danielson got all emotional at WrestleMania 30 when he got, when Apollo uh, Valdez gave him the mask. And, um, you know, said that uh, Blue Panther sent him, you know, um, an autographed mask and everything like that. And there's actually a video of that on YouTube somewhere. And then uh, yesterday, after the, the show um, was over, um, there was a situation where, um, you know, they issued the challenge for next week. So, so Brian Danielson and Blue Panther are doing a singles match next Friday. So anyway, um, Blue Panther saw him and thanked him and said that the reason this all happened was because of him. And um, Valdez basically said that uh, um, after the show at Arena Mexico en ended, I approached the tunnel where Blue Panther was and I saw him taking photos and Carlos Acosta of Super Luchas told me to take a picture with him because I'd helped make this match possible. Because the whole reason this match happened, the reason Moxley went, the reason Claudio went, the reason that they had this match was obviously because Brian Danielson wanted to wrestle Blue Panther and everybody wanted to help Brian Danielson achieve one of his dreams, which just happened last night. And um, so that's the basic gist of it. And then... Um, Panther, um, after the show, said that I've been looking for you for years because he hadn't seen Valdez in five years. And, you know, he asked everyone if he was, if you were there because I want to thank you because it's thanks to you that th and the video that we did um, at Arena Coliseo and Monterey, you know, right before WrestleMania, that this match is happening and you are responsible for this. And um, Valdez said it choked me up because even though others have said similar things, as I mentioned, I've never been given that credit, but Blue Pan for Blue Panther to say that to me, it meant a lot. The video is a small part of the whole conversation we had. He introduced me to his wife and son and told them he's the one who gave Brian Danielson the mask and that that is what made this and then made the video. And because of that, this happened. So anyway, that's the story behind everything. It's this, this match was 10 years in the making directly and probably 20 years in the making and you know because you know brian danielson probably started watching blue panther i'm going to guess in the 90s you know if that's i'm going to guess so probably 25 years in the making maybe well the uh the main event was mystico volador jr blue panther and ultimo guerrero versus moxley claudio brian danielson and matt seidel and seeing the lineups, this was this was a one fall match, but it was it was uh, it was a captain's fall match, which means well, they, you they're have all to captains pin the falls. captain, or you have to pin two of the other guys. Right. So as soon as they announced that the captain of the AW team was Matt Seidel, I know that, that I like, gave well, way. Uh, I, I thought that gave away the finish too. That, that I mean, we all knew the finish. I mean, it was pretty obvious going in. I mean, if you watch AEW, it's like these poor CMLL wrestlers. I mean. Anytime they were in the ring with someone from AEW, they got beaten, and you know they pretty much. Well, Mystico, had to... Mystico, and um, 
Uh, some of the others got some wins, but not over top guys. No, it was always over low level guys. Yeah. So you knew that there was going to be, you know, CMLL getting their big win in Arena Mexico. And uh, they had this match was the heat was unbelievable. The whole and show, the heat was unbelievable. The whole show, although this match was, I think, the most heated, although the semi was pretty close when it came to heat. And even the, the, the Cavernario match with, um, um, uh, what's it, Averno, had, I mean, every match had great heat. You know, it, it was just up and down the show. This was, I think that like somebody described it to me that was there live and said that it was like the um, Canadian Stampede pay-per-view in 97. And that was kind of like my take on it, too. Well, it was. That's what it felt like, especially that yeah. main event. Yeah. It didn't go 30-something minutes. I think it went like 18 minutes or something like that. But, so, but the whole show. I mean, Mystico, well, here's the thing. So you had you had, Mo, you had the, the AW team were clearly the Rudos here. And uh, boy, did they work like it. They beat the shit out of these CMLL uh, guys. Especially Ultimo Guerrero. Oh, my God. They pounded on that guy. I yeah, mean, they but, pounded on him. But that guy is, it's like, even though he's a Rudo, what a great baby face he was in this match. Oh, yeah, he, he was unbelievable. He got pounded on, and but every time he started making the comeback, the place went nuts. They you know went, what I mean? They went nuts because it doesn't matter if he's a baby face or a heel. He was facing Team CMLL, so he was a hero. Yeah. And, and of course, whenever the baby faces made their comeback, I mean, the BCC and Seidel, I mean, man, they sold for these guys. They, and, they, they worked so well with them, yeah. I mean, it was, it was like, it was amazing to watch this match and see, like, how well everybody worked together. Right. In, at, 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 the, at the style, because... Exactly. Because years ago, when you would have, like, big-time American stars go to Arena Mexico, they would punch and kick, and they'd wave the flag, and they'd do all the shortcuts. And the But the actual wrestling was usually not that good because the style problems. And what's happened is is that the, the, um, the Mexican wrestlers have learned more how to work with the Americans. And the Americans, like these guys, like, they didn't go down there as arrogant americans and we're going to just do our style and and mexican style is stupid which was used to be like a lot of the big things like oh mexican style makes no sense it's fake it's stupid all wrestling's fake by the way all wrestling's stupid by the way if you look at it as like if it's being real so they would go down there and that that was usually what happened you know you'd have like not very good matches but matches that had great amount of heat and these guys they went in there and they went in and did you know the style but they understood what they were doing it, you know it was like it was so different i mean the the attitude of of all four of the americans that went there or well, claudia's not american but all four of the of the um AEW guys was we're going to work in a marina mexico main event and we know what did you know we they studied it and we, they know what it is and they weren't out there just winging it at all well you know i don't want to uh talk too much about the guy nor make this come across as if I'm glorifying him, but, you know, I, I actually once talked to Chris Benoit about uh, Mexico because he had worked in America, uh, Canada, Japan, and Mexico. He worked at uh, UWA. He, oh, oh, was it UWA? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait. Uh, Chris Benoit worked, um, I, think it was U, I think it was UWA. The, yeah. the, the yeah, point it was, was it, worked, it wasn't, it wasn't um, he didn't work in Mexico. He worked all these different styles of wrestling, and so I, I said, like, uh, you know, how did you, you know, Go down there and work lucha, and he goes. I didn't. I just did my style. I beat the hell out of people. Yeah. So he didn't even try. But if you look at like Claudio wrestled for years in Chikara, he can do lucha. Matt Seidel has done a, a lucha based style for years and years and years. And John Moxley and, and Danielson. I mean, Moxley was just in there doing a Moxley match. He was just beating the hell out of people, and he hit his cutters. Yeah, but he, so, like he, he, but he, so, but he sold the right of way. Of course, of course. And you know, Brian Danielson wasn't in there doing like a bunch of Hurricane Ranas or anything. He did a, a Brian Danielson match. Him and Mystico even did the, you know, the yes and the no spot and everything like that. But everybody did what they were great at, and you know, the team AW they they got their heat. They sold. Uh, Mystico ended up submitting Seidel. Uh, just a, I mean, this match was just, it was just flat out great. This was a great, great match. Amazing heat. And then, yes, it is Blue Panther and Brian Danielson this coming Friday yep. at Arena Mexico. So if you bought your subscription to that CMLL channel on YouTube for 35 bucks, don't cancel it yet. 
because there's well, another you get, one you're going to want to watch on well, Friday. You, well, you get the you get the thing you get the thing you get all the all the Friday shows. Yes, I mean, yes. they're also going to have the Universal Tournament this month, so there's a lot of stuff going on. The Champion of Champions Tournament. They have all the champions, um, all the singles, tag team, and trios champions all go into a tournament that lasts three weeks to crown the Champion of Champions. So that's going to be going on, but. Um, there were times, and it wasn't once, like every now and then, like, you you know, like in, um, and it, it, it's very, very rare, but every now and then you'll have these matches in the United States or Canada where literally the crowd is going so crazy you feel it's like the earthquake thing. Yes. And it, that happened three times in this match where they were just, just, uh, you know, the just exploding, like stomping their feet or whatever, and the, it was shaking. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I loved mean, this, it. This, this doesn't happen in Arena Mexico. This, this, I mean, Arena Mexico has a lot, a lot of heat, and I've seen some incredible matches there, but, but this was unusual even for Arena Mexico. This is not normal Arena Mexico either. It was... Um, there were a lot of Americans in the crowd. Um, I... Uh, you know, and this this also was different from the usual Arena Mexico in, in the sense that usual Arena Mexico is probably about 40% tourists. But this one, because the show sold out three weeks ahead, there were no tourists, except for the wrestling fans who may have bought tickets, you know, going down there. Um, you know, it isn't like, you know, your tourists that aren't wrestling fans who are there, and, and you, basically they have a deal there where they have uh, tour buses. And, you know, you, you know, you do the tour bus and you go all over the city or whatever you go to you know famous celebrities homes or you go to the sightseeing tours or whatever one of the things in mexico city is is that the tour bus you pay whatever it is you know i don't know what the price is and they you know hook you up for some drinks go to the arena mexico and uh you just go out there and have fun and they bring you right back to your hotel room they take you from your hotel and bring you right back and they didn't do that for tonight because there were no tickets. So um, it was more of a wrestling crowd than usual, but it was more heated than usual. And um, one of the things that that benefited is, is there's there's certain spots that the Mexicans do that the tourists don't know. You know what I mean? It's like if you're watching WWE and you've never watched WWE before, um, or or AEW or anything. There's certain spots that like would be over big to the wrestling fans, but if you're not a wrestling fan, and you watched it, you wouldn't get them at all. And this time, those spots that that like up and down the show, the, the trademark spots, like everyone in the crowd knew. Whereas on the tourist show, you know, on a, on a regular show, you know, some of the crowd will know, but a lot of the crowd will have no idea. But they're just there for the fun and the moves. So, um, you know, so it, it was it was probably easier, more heated. Um, you know, the, you know, Bryce Remsburg played heel ref a little bit too. So that was kind of easy. I'm not, you know, he, he didn't do it overtly. There was like one or two spots where the crowd kind of turned on him when he was, uh, looking right at the AEW guys who were destroying Ultimo Guerrero four on one. Um, you know, but yeah, Ultimo Guerrero did a lot of selling. Um, Mystico was basically the glory guy, you know, where he would come in and, just fly around and do all that stuff and you know volador as well and everything and um blue panther and brian the crowd knew blue panther and brian danielson they sure they, did because when they would get in the place would go completely nuts hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com you have a commute do you work out at the gym do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus... 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.